Hello students, in this video we'll discuss some basic properties of conditional expectation and martingales. So given a sequence of random variables, that's another way of saying a time series, so I'll give you a sequence of random variables m1, m2, mn, and the collection of subsets F1, F2, Fn, where these subsets are partitions of the probability space, where we think of these things, so Fn, Fj will be events which partition the probability space. And so we can say that if F is one of these sets, we can condition these random variables on these collections of information. So we can think of these F1, F2 as information or subsets of the probability space. So we will say that Mn, the sequence n bigger than or equal to 1, is a martingale. if the conditional expectation of the n plus first random variable in the set given the information from the nth subset collection is the previous term in the sequence. So this is the definition of what a martingale is. So let's see a few examples of martingales. So here's the first example. This is a random walk. This is the prototypical example of a martingale sequence. So let's let x1, xn be iid, identical independently distributed random variables, such that the probability that x is equal to 1 is the probability that x is equal to negative 1, and since they're identically distributed, it's going to be the probability that any x, so let's just say x1 is this, and those probabilities are a half. So what happens is that I can define Sn to be x1 plus all the way up to xn. And we can visualize this random walk on a graph. What we can say is we can say that if I start Let's say that we specify that we can start at zero. So we think of like x0 over here as starting at zero. And what we'll do is we will go up with probability one half, potentially after one time step, two time steps, three time steps, four, five. And this will be the value of s, the random walk. It can go up again, or it can go down, or it can go up, or it can go down, and so on forever. It can go up, up, or down down, down, and so any sort of path of this form is one sample path of this random walk. And we'll let Fn be the information contained in x1 through xn. This is going to be the information of the walk up to time n. That's a fancy way of saying that it's the collection of subsets generated by x1 up through xn. And I write sigma here because these objects, these collections of subsets, in a more theoretical sense, need to be understood as sigma algebras. But what we'll do for the time being is we'll sort of sweep that under the rug and we'll use basic properties of conditional expectation to understand these things. So now what we can do is we can say, well, what is the conditional expectation of Sn plus 1 given Fn? That is the conditional expectation of Sn plus Xn plus 1 given Fn. 
And so what I've done here is I've taken the random walk at time n plus 1 and written it as the random walk at time n plus the next sort of coin flip or the movement decision. So I do a random walk with n steps, and then I pause and I flip the coin one last time and go up with probability half, down with probability half. Now we'll use two properties of conditional expectation. The first property I'll use, I'll use that this is the ex conditional expectation of Sn given Fn plus the conditional expectation of xn plus 1 given f. N. And so what I've used here in this step is I've used the fact that conditional expectation is linear. Conditional expectation. Is linear. Now I will use two further properties of conditional expectation. I will use the property that if, we'll write these properties over here, so properties. We have two extremes with conditional expectation. The conditional expectation of a random variable x given a collection is equal to x if x is known in the set f. In other words, if the information that x contains is contained in the information of the set of subsets f, then the conditional expectation will just output x. The second property is that the conditional expectation of x given f will be equal to the ordinary expectation of x if x is independent of the information in F. So we have two extremes with conditional expectation. The first extreme is that the random variable x, every bit of information about x is known in the collection of subsets f. In that case, the conditional expectation doesn't do anything, it just outputs the function, the random variable x itself. The second bit of information we know is that if x is independent of the information known in f, then the conditional expectation is the best guess of what we can determine f to x to be. And the best guess that we can determine x to be if we don't know any information about it is just the expected value of x. So if we know lots of information about x in the subset, the conditional expectation will output the random variable itself, whereas if the collection of subsets doesn't know much about x, then it will tend to output the expected value. Now we can use that fact, these two properties together, to say that the, expect, the conditional expectation of Sn given Fn, well Fn knows all the information of the walk up to time n, so these things know each other, meaning that this conditional expectation will just output Sn. And over here, the, this is the information of the walk up until time n, and this is the information about the walk at time n plus 1, so these are independent. And so these will just output the expected value of xn plus 1. Now, xn plus 1 will be 1 with probability of half and negative 1 with probability of half. So we'll see that this expected value over here is just going to be so this will be Sn plus 1 with probability of half plus negative 1 with probability of half. So I will just get that this is Sn. So the conditional expectation of Sn plus 1 given Fn is Sn. And this implies that the random walk is a martingale. We can connect this example with the binomial tree stock price distribution by saying that what we're really doing with the binomial stock price distribution is making some form of a random walk. So what we have from previous videos is that the discounted stock price at time n, given a binomial tree distribution, also has the martingale property. So in future videos, we'll see the properties of martingale and how we can exploit those to make information decisions about stock prices. Thank you very much.